Welcome back in just a moment, a trip down a Mini Memory Lane. Well, we first saw Minis on our roads in 1959. 55 years on, the Mini is still in pole position, beating rivals such as the Jaguar E-Type. Oh, that's a gorgeous car. McLaren F1, that's a lovely car. Uh, to be voted uh, Britain's best ever car. Well, here to explain our enduring love affair with them is motoring expert and mini enthusiast, Quentin Bulls. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. So why, what makes it such a classic car? Why has it stood the test of time? Well, just look at it. It I is know. what they call um, the, the, the most brilliant form of automotive packaging. So you've got enough room for five people and their luggage, little transverse engine, flat sides. I mean, the world changed when this car came out. Post-war, austerity Britain, everybody's very grim, upright cars like church pews, and this little poppet bursts onto the scene with its pastel colours and its title wheels. But the irony is, people didn't buy it because they were so serious, they thought it was frivolous, it was a silly little car. So for the first year of production, 1959, British Motor Corporation had their head in their hands. They didn't know what was going to happen because they thought they would sell about um, 150,000 cars in that year and they sold just 20. Really? Really? Yeah. So, so what turned it around it? then? OK, well, that's a lovely story too because the designer, Alec Isagonis, brilliant, brilliant man, um, lent one to Princess Margaret's husband, Lord Snowden. So he's zipping around Chelsea, the papers see it, and then in another masterstroke, he gets the Queen to drive one in Windsor Castle, and then all of a sudden it becomes trendy. Then the Beatles buy them. There's fabulous footage of, of, of John Lennon getting out of one. Um, Steve McQueen had one, Lulu, Twiggy. So the little car that nobody wanted because it was too too silly suddenly became classless. And then and then my dad, my dad bought one, you see, and that turned it all around. <laughs> we had a lovely little blue one. It was it was like deeper blue than that. 7907 C D was you the see, registration. But everybody's got a mini oh, story. We yeah. all I don't. remember. Well, I'm I need to put it on my you need, list. You need to come out. I've do. got one of these and I bought it for two thousand seven hundred pounds on eBay in 1959 after that glass of wine at midnight that you do <laughs> but it's gone up in value so much that I've refused 25,000 pounds for it so but they they have changed I mean they have changed over yeah. the years they've made there's a big difference to this sort of mini that the, the 1959 am I right yeah yeah to, to what we see now yes and I mean it's a good change so in 2001 BMW said okay we're gonna do the most difficult automotive act in the world which is to make a new mini and they'd put lots and lots of concepts and Gorgeous. tried harder and harder and harder. But what's lovely about this, that the person who was in charge of this project, a German called Bernd Pistrider, was the great grand nephew of the original Isagonis oh, really? designer. So it came out in 2001 and everybody said, actually, you know, it's not like an, uh, you know, an original mini. So the purists did say, look, this is this is a, a faux copy, mm -hmm. but it's, it's got been... the same character though. Oh, completely! It's got that kind of cute factor. Massively, thing about massively it. successful. And don't forget, you know, that's a British design and made by British workers. So's this Mini employs six thousand people in the UK. Yeah. Um, massively successful car. Um, Sixty percent of all the parts in this car come from British suppliers. So it's really important to the UK economy. I'm always surprised when you get in a Mini how un-mini-like they mm. are. They actually, they actually feel quite spacious inside. Well, Steph's it's got like a Mini a... and I love driving it. That's, oh, the really? one, that's the one that's outside the, the door, the back door, the and one that's that you the one you just get in and drive that, and it's a brilliant yeah, car so to drive. There are lots like of other it. retro cars, like the Fiat 500, like the Volkswagen Beetle, which are very, very, very good in their own right, but this is the one that comes top of all the surveys. It's you know the, the slowest depreciating car in the UK, this one, and they do diesels that do 70 miles to the gallon, yeah. mm. and, a, and a little coupe that and will do 150. And this is much safer than it used to be, am I right? Safe. And that, that was be... not safe at all. Yeah. Because Isagonis said when, when, when the safety was discussed, well, if people are so silly to crash my cars, it's their fault. Uh, oh, really? oh, that's helpful. <laughs> oh, your daughter's called Mini, isn't she? She is, M I N I. And you've got, have you also got another one called Mercedes? Yes, I have. I do need to get out more, okay? <laughs> and the dog's called Monza. I love really? it. I love it. I really? love it. So we move up again. So this is this what's. We... This is the latest Mini. Yeah. Um, this is a Mini Cooper in um, volcanic orange, which is lovely. Is um, it? But it gets bigger. It should be called bigger. Dirty Nappy, I think. It's slightly mustard. Mm. Volcanic look, all these orange. hot colours are in now. All are these they? really strident colours. Come on, get, get with the pressure. Okay, okay. I thought you knew about this. Now I'm <laughs> useless. Well, my wife tells me colours like this really, really, really are hot. Right. Now, it's had a restyle, it has got bigger, but you've got things inside here like mood lighting. What? So you can. Um, you can turn on your your, your, your speedo Mood here. Mood lighting. Yeah, look, 
Get it. Would you like is to sit that in like the car, for, for, Yes, please. Is that for, like, road rage? It goes red. Well, it just calms you down, and it's got full connectivity, oh. sat-nav. I like it. <laughs> it's very smart. And let's be honest... I mean, honest. it feels like a much... If we had that it, it little car like now, it wouldn't... You know, you can't do motorways and things like that. You've got to have a safe car that still has personality, and this is it. Um, I can't drive a manual. <laughs> They what? do an automatic. So I'm Can't not going to go anywhere in this one. No. I, well, I did pass my test in a manual, but I haven't driven a manual since my test day. Yeah. So I'd be dangerous. But there are seven different <laughs> mini <laughs> models, and there are automatic options and convertibles. Look how big it is, though, because I'm quite tall, and there's loads of room. Well, there are um, uh, many other uh, cars uh, of a similar size available. So what are, the, what, are the big, uh, what are the big challenges? What are the other good small cars? Well, you've got things like the Fiat 500, which is I'm based on the, on the 50s, 60s Fiat 500, which is very cute, very popular, selling incredibly well, low depreciation, high MPG, but it's not quite as practical as this in terms of, of room. Volkswagen Beetle, they've just brought out a new Beetle, yeah. um, retro, um, and that's lovely too. But again, if you're asking my opinion as a motoring journalist, it would always have to be the Mini. Not just because it's an emotional connection, because it's a very practical purchase too. Do you think there'll ever be a, a car that comes along that we'll fall in love with as much as the Mini? I mean, is anything capable of doing that now? That's an interesting one. You mentioned the Jaguar E-Type earlier on oh, today. Yeah. Now, I, 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 sadly, I've got one of those as well. You've got one? Yeah, 1961. What colour is it? Uh, opalescent dark blue. What engine have you got in it? 3.8 flat floor. Just talk among yourselves. Are you jealous about that? Well, uh, really quite. A lot. <laughs> we need, we need <laughs> to have a chat. But Jackie bought out the F Type, which is another kind of retro styled, based on the E Type. That's going to be a huge, huge success. And these are British car companies yeah. really helping the UK economy. And I'm, I'm really, really proud that we're, we're beating the world. And the, one of the biggest markets for this car is the US. Um, is they come in all sizes. And, uh, and here's, the, uh, here's the smallest one. Uh, being driven oh! very beautifully. Look at that. There we go. Oh, sweet. Don't crash the Don't car. Don't crash into it. Six volts, uh, rechargeable. We need to turn you round so we can see you. I don't know whether, I don't know whether you've got... You can't. I can. Oh, well ready. done. Well ready, done. Ready, well ready, done. ready. Let's turn you round. Turn you round. Less than £150 and it does three kilometres per hour, however fast oh. that is in, in, in old money. How <laughs> cute is that? And look, it's got a little gear stick. She's driving better than I do. I'm Brilliant. most impressed. Uh, thank you very much um, indeed. It's lovely pleasure. to see you. Yes, thank you. What a lovely day to be on the You couldn't bed. run me down to the shops, could you? <laughs> Watch your back. Oh, it's George Carr Martin Lewis explains why planning means saving when it comes to summer holidays. You will, uh, you've got to push the gear stick We'll be back in a minute. Don't go That's away. it.